Now let's look at the efficient color coding. Focusing on color, the signal is a three-dimensional vector coming from red, green, and blue cones. Again, we are ignoring space and time for simplicity. So you can look at this signal as if it comes from a single image location X and at a single time instant T. Or you can see each of these three cone signals as a particular spatial temporal average of the image for this particular cone type. In later lectures, we will combine color dimension with other image dimensions such as space and time. But for the moment, well, let's just focus on color, treating the signal as a three-dimensional vector. We could even simplify further, looking at only two cone types, red cone and green cone, using this notation SR and SG for the two cones, red and green. And some color deficient human individuals have only two cone types, and they are called dichromatic rather than trichromatic. And with signal as two-dimensional, we can then use our intuition from stereo coding when the inputs are also two dimensions from the left eye and right eye. So the inputs from the red and green cones are analogous to inputs from the left and right eyes. Now we can recall from our efficient stereo coding, the decorrelation step makes the summation channel and the difference channel from the left and right eye inputs. And then again, control will give a gain to each of these two channels according to the signal to noise in each channel. And then multiplexing mixes them together. So they each will have both the summation channel signal and the uh, difference channel signal, and they will favor one eye or the other according to how they are mixed. And uh, now, if we see the red cone signal and green cone signal, they have the similar variance, just like the left and right eye signal is this kind of symmetry. Then we can make exact parallels. For instance, decoration will mix these together, make a summation channel. Then it will be just indifferent to whether it's red or green, just average them together. This will be a gray level luminance while a different signal will um, favor one cone over another. So this will be the chromatic signals. And then we will use our gain formula, which applies generally according to exactly what is the signal to noise in each channel in a specific manner. And now after we mix them, we will get O1 and O2 as the final two output. In typically, they will mix both the luminance signals and chromatic signal in some way, and we can make them to suit our purpose. And they will be efficiently representing both the luminance and the chromatic signals. The red and green cones are very similar. Here, the red curve and green curve, they are the spectrum sensitivity curves for the red and green cones, and this for the blue cone. And this is the wavelength of the light from 400 to 700 nanometers, which makes the light more bluish here and more reddish here. And this is the sensitivity of the cones, red, green cone curves are indeed overlapping with each other a lot. And so therefore it's expected that the red cone and green cone at the same spatial location, they should have their signal very correlated with each other in their input signals. And we can characterize their correlation by this two by two matrix. So the diagonal elements characterize the self correlation between the red cone to itself and green cone to itself. And these are cross correlation between the red and green cones. And of course, these two values should be the same. And these two values are very similar because of red and green cones really differ only a little bit in their peak sensitivity location uh, in terms of the wavelength. And of course, the correlation step uh, is to decorrelate the red and green cone signals. If we also include the blue cones, making the input this three-dimensional vector, then the correlation matrix is this three by three matrix. So the self-correlations within each cones, 
This is cross correlation between red and green cones, cross correlation between red and blue cones, and between blue and green cones. And this is the blue cone self correlation. Then the efficient coding recipe applies as follows. Decorrelation makes a rotation in a three-dimensional space, giving one luminance channel and two orthogonal chromatic channels. And uh, gain control then gives uh, a gain to each of these channels. And the multiplexing is then another rotation matrix in this three-dimensional space. Let's look at the decorrelation in more detail. First, we do it intuitively. We will use the approximation as if red and green are very similar. And uh, so the self-correlation term, let's treat them as the same. So write them out as the same. And also the cross-correlation between red and blue, we treat them the same as green and, between green and blue. So red and blue are correlated the same way as green and blue. So these are the same, so therefore these two are also the same. However, this term is generally treated as different from these two terms, which are treated as the same. Now, to decorrelate these three correlated channels, we can more or less understand this process as composed of two separate processes. First, treat it, look only at red and green, and so we have seen that if we only look at two channels, we get a summation channel and difference channel. Red and green equal to yellow, we treat it like a first stage luminance channel, and this is a chromatic channel. After we've done that, now we add blue. And this blue will be mixed with this and that. And it turns out that in doing so, we more or less can keep this channel untouched, but only mix these two to create their summation, yellow plus blue, and that's the luminance. So this luminance really is blue plus green plus red. And the difference between blue and yellow, blue and yellow, that difference, yeah? And this difference is another chromatic channel. And this chromatic channel is different and orthogonal in addition to this chromatic channel, so two different chromatic channels. And this is how we can intuitively understand uh, the decorrelation between three signals, two separate stages. Uh, in the first stage, the mixing between red and green can be treated symmetrically because they have roughly equal signal power, so the weighted dif uh, the difference and, and sum are really equal weight between red and green. However, when we mix blue and yellow, then the summation and difference are actually weighted summation and weighted difference in typical cases. This is the gist of decorrelation. In more formal terms, this decorrelation from RGB to luminance RG chrominance BY chrominance uh, can be done by this decorrelation transform. And as we know, this transform should be derived from this correlation matrix so that each of these uh, its row vectors should be an eigenvector of this correlation matrix. So once we work it out what it is, you will see that it should be this one. Yeah. So each of these row vectors is an eigenvector of this correlation matrix. So now if we time this k0 with uh, any input vector, so that means project each of these vectors onto each of these uh, eigenvectors, we can get these three components. Let's work it out. And then you can see that indeed the luminance component is made of this vector times that vector, and that's indeed red plus green, that's yellow, and this is blue. And so it's weighted sum of yellow and blue gives you the luminance channel. And the second component is the second row times that, and that's indeed red minus green chromatic channel. And the third component is the third row times that, and you can see that indeed this is yellow 
with this negative weight plus blue with a positive weight. So this is a blue yellow contrast. And these weights are expressed in terms of this angle, which depends on this correlation matrix as indeed all of these eigenvectors and so forth should be determined by that in any case. And so that's expected. And this is the explicit form of dependence of how these channel should be dependent on this correlation matrix. So therefore, any of these input RGB stimulus can now be expressed in terms of these three independent components graphically by projecting them into these three orthogonal axes. And one is the luminous axis and one is red-green contrast, red-green opponent dimension. And the other is blue-yellow opponent dimension. And so one luminance and two opponent channels are often seen in experimental data. In the literature, you can see how a lot of these signals are expressed in this way. So that these three directions are often called three cardinal directions in the literature. 